Cue the boss music. All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over complex three of the electron transport chain. Yeah, it's been like 55, 56 days since I last posted. I have a reason. This is what happens when you spend 12 to 14 days in a lab doing surgery and getting no data. Yeah, so that's kind of why I have not been posting is because number one, I've been tired and you know, been in lab and did, just didn't have any energy, but I'm here, don't worry. Today in medical news, Ketamine has been legalized to treat depression as a nasal spray in a healthcare setting. This is super, this is big, okay? Because ketamine and depression, the interaction is amazing. Ketamine is one of the best antidepressants there is just out there in the world, besides cocaine, okay? And in, this is also big is because the professor I do research with, his best friend was the one who found out the interaction between depression and ketamine. So, very big day. All right, but we're not here for ketamine. We're here for complex three of the electron transport chain, unfortunately. So, we ended with complex two, okay? And in complex two, you, we made ubiquinol. So, we are going to start with ubiquinol. So this right here, don't worry about it, is an overview, okay? Complex three consists of two rounds, okay? And this is also called the Q cycle. So whenever, anytime you see the Q cycle on test or on the MCAT or whatever, it's talking about complex three, okay? So here's what's happening. We're gonna go over it step by step, so don't worry. But here's what you need to know for this overview part. So complex one, so let's go all the way back to complex one. Complex one, we made ubiquinol, okay? Complex two, we made ubiquinol. So these two ubiquinol molecules are gonna go to complex three, okay? And now the big goal of complex three is to shove protons into the intermembrane space, right? Acting as a proton pump. That is it, okay? And you're gonna realize something that it looks a little bit inefficient, and it is. It kinda is inefficient, but the whole goal is to pro pump protons into the intermembrane space for the ATPase pump we'll get into, okay? Now, the big thing you also need to know is complex three only functions with two ubiquinol molecules. If this was just one, this would not work. It would be impossible, okay? And you would actually have severe, it would be problematic, okay? So you need two. That's really important. You're gonna see why in a second. So let's do round one. What is happening here? So ubiquinol is gonna arrive to complex three from complex one and complex two, okay? Now, one of the electrons is gonna go to this iron sulfur protein, ISP, okay? And then it's gonna go to cytochrome C1. These are, the, what it's basically doing is these Proteins are essentially just holding on to the electrons momentarily, okay? And what's gonna happen is this cytochrome C1 is gonna donate the electron to cytochrome C, okay? Now this cytochrome C, when it has the electron, is now going to go to complex four. So when we get to complex four, you're gonna see why. But it's basically just passing it on to the next complex, right? Just moving the one of the electrons to the next complex, okay? Now, the other electron is gonna to go to something called cytochrome B. So another cytochrome protein, but this one's a B, not C, okay? So it's gonna to go to cytochrome B. Now, here's what's kinda of odd. So what's gonna happen is the ubiquinol is gonna give the electrons away, right? Well, notice it has two protons. Well, what's gonna happen is the two protons are actually going to come off and enter the intermembrane space, which is good. This is our currency. We need this for the ATPase pump that's to come to generate ATP, right? Remember the goal, the entire, the whole goal of the electron transport chain is to make sure we have protons in the intermembrane space to power the ATPase pump later on in the electron transport chain because the ATPase pump takes protons 
and converts it into ATP, okay? And it, and it has to be in the intermembrane space, okay? The reason this works is because this iron sulfur protein in cytochrome B cannot hold onto protons. It does not have the ability to hold onto protons. So that means the only place it can go is the intermembrane space. So it's kind of cleverly designed like that, right? So now we have the electron on cytochrome B and the electron here on, in, on cytochrome C. So now we have a bare Q molecule here, right? Ubiquinone. Well, here's what's gonna happen is cytochrome B is gonna let go of the electron and the electron is gonna join uh, uh, ubiquinone to become semiquinone, right? So you'll notice there's a radical here. This is a radical. This is called semiquinone. This is kind of like a toxic X. Okay, we have all had one, probably. At least I have. Uh, this is like a toxic X. No one wants this. No one wants a semiquinone in their body, right? No one, it's terrible, terrible for you, okay? This is why we have two rounds, okay? So round one, we make a semiquinone. Now you're probably wondering, wait a second, what was the purpose of transferring you know, the electron to cytochrome B just to have it go back. The reason is, is to pump electrons. The only way to pump electrons to the intermembrane space is getting rid of the two electrons. That's the only way. Had we not got rid of this, we would not be able to pump the two protons into intermembrane space, not possible, and it would be useless. So now we have created semiquinone, okay? So this right here, all these words is what basically what I just described. So you can take a screenshot of it, just read it, right? Take up, you know, pause the video if you want. Round two. Now round two is exactly the same thing, but here's what happens. So we have the ubiquinol, right? And it donates its electron to ISP, right? The iron sulfur protein, and then to cytochrome C1, and then it does the same thing, okay? The other electron goes to cytochrome B, right? Now, notice, we end here with ubiquinone. Nothing, this is gonna stay like the, as it is, okay? But the semiquinone we just created from round one, well, the electron that was holding this, right, is gonna go to the semiquinone and turn it into ubiquinone, right, for reuse. This is why it's called the Q cycle, right? Because this is gonna go back now, right, to round one to help out, right? This is gonna go, this is gonna go back to round one here, right? That's why it's called the Q cycle. Now you'll notice, this is what you, this is why I mentioned you need two molecules, right? So we end with round one, right? With a semiquinone, which is really bad, right? It's a radical, it's, it's an X we don't like. So in order to get rid of the semiquinone, this radical, we need to shove in another ubiquinone take shred off its electrons, right? To, re, to basically convert the semiquinone into ubiquinol. Now, in order for this to happen, we also need to take two protons from the matrix to make ubiquinol. So additional, with the semiquinone, with this electron, right, we got from cytochrome B, right, originally from here, right, we transferred it to here, Cytochrome B is holding on, right? The semiquinone now gets the electron. Now, with just with the electron, semiquinone is gonna stay as it is, but we need two protons. So it's, it's costly. You'll, you'll notice this is costly. We have to put in two protons. But remember, we're also doing this, we also shove two protons into the intermembrane space, right? So technically, we, have four protons we're shoving in, but two protons have to be, right, uh, shoved in into the, into the complex here, right, from the matrix. So really the net is two protons, okay? That's what the net is. So it's costly, right, where we have to use half the protons to do this. Hopefully this makes sense. So once again, let me, let me just rephrase if you didn't understand. So we're gonna, for round two, we're gonna take ubiquinol, right? 
one electron is going to go to ISP, to cytochrome C1, and then to, to cytochrome uh, C, right? This is C1. This is just regular C, right? This is cytochrome C1. This is just right, regular cytochrome C. The other electron is going to go to cytochrome B. Doing this will shove two more protons into the intermembrane space. Doing so, we're going to get, we're going to use that semiquinone we have created in, comp, in the round one. Take that electron that was being held by cytochrome B. We're going to take two protons from the matrix, combine them all together to make ubiquinol, which we're going to go back to round one right here. Okay, and that right there is complex three. So hopefully this video was helpful. And uh, if it was, please like and subscribe and I promise there'll be more videos. Now, I was thinking of doing something. I had an idea, it may be stupid, but you know, it's an idea. I was thinking of, so I have a basically like a conference room in my lab with a big, huge whiteboard. So I was thinking of maybe, you know, getting my GoPro and recording a video with the GoPro, with me standing there in person on the whiteboard, drawing stuff out and explaining it. But then I was like, you know what? That kind of makes me like similar like the other YouTubers, right? Other YouTubers are doing that as well. And this is kind of different. I mean, it, you know, it's, uh, I mean, at least I'm, I'm more fun, you know, I'm more fun, but, and I'm more in depth, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I may do like a trial video on it and see how it goes. And if you guys like it, I'll continue doing it. If you don't like it, then just call me stupid and we'll just keep doing this. But anyways, yeah. Until next time, later.